My name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore this 110 year old classic sailing yacht Tally Ho. So we've got quite a bit of bronze work to do before we can start planking. Pat and Clark aren't here at the moment although hopefully they will be both coming back at some point but for now we've got two more people joining the crew and we're all going to be sort of rotating between the work here and the work at the foundry but in this video we're going to be focusing on the work we're doing here which is making the patterns for the hanging and lodging knees which are then going to be cast in Port Townsend. I'm also going to be looking into a way to make rivets. We're going to need about 4,000 copper rivets to fasten the hull planking to the frame I'm going to need a lot of copper rod and a fast and efficient way to make that rod into rivets. So hanging knees are an important structural part of a wooden boat. They fasten to the frames and the deck beams, creating a sort of bracket that holds the deck of the boat to the hull of the boat. They add a lot of rigidity and stiffness to the vessel as a whole. And like many things in the boat, there are a lot of different ways of approaching them. On Tally Ho, for reasons we've already discussed, we're going to be casting the hanging knees out of silicon bronze. And to do that, we need a pattern of each knee. So to make these patterns, we start by laminating strips of plywood onto the frames and the deck beams where the knees are going to go. Hi there, my name is David. Uh, I moved up here just recently from San Francisco to help out Leo. Uh, I was working primarily doing a fine carpentry and cabinetry installations, different kind of fixtures all around the Bay Area. Uh, while I'm up here, I'm hoping to hone a lot of carpentry skills, but also learn a lot about boat building, the culture that comes with it, and hopefully maybe learn some sailing in on the weekends. My name is Matt. I'm a carpenter from Seattle. I lived out in Port Townsend for a couple of years and kind of watched what was happening in the boat yard. During quarantine, I went home and ended up binge watching a lot of Leo's videos on YouTube. Was planning on moving back to Port Townsend and ran into Pete at the co-op. Asked him if they needed help and they did. And so here I am. Hopefully while I'm here, I'll be able to uh, sharpen my resume as a boat builder and potentially get a job in a boat yard someday. There's a lot of trip hazards both in and outside the boat. Driving it should park it like they have done, put the forks down on the ground. These are the arms to fit them into the frames. And then once that's done, we're grinding the inside faces just to make them smooth and shiny basically. So there's a lot of the casting process, it you know it leads these this is part of the gate where the bronze flows in. Right. Um, so these need to be taken down. And the idea is that you're gonna you're trying to get the bottom to drop down so that it's sitting flat on this piece of wood. So you can see it needs to come down quite a lot right now. It looks like it's touching all the way up to there pretty much on this side. The one thing we were doing that's helpful to get them in place when it's awkward to maneuver it, we we're putting a board and clamping it to oh, the yeah. frames. That can be helpful. <coughs> well, we'll see how it goes when we grind it down, but there was quite a bit of drop. And you can you can kind of see when you start looking at it, you see the humps. You see there's a little bit of a round in the middle, pretty much all the way up. But if there's any obvious humps in the frame where it's hitting this, we can grind down the frame as well. If you do have a trip switch trip, I've seen this happen a few times, 
don't want to be using the tool. The switch goes, your tool turns off, oh. you put it down, you go and you flip the trip switch and it turns on and come back and it's like torn up the entire deck you just laid or whatever. <laughs> the more you angle them up, they'll cut away a lot more. So if you're grinding it like that, it's not going to take off so much material. And just get a feel for it, you know, first of all you'll probably just take off a little bit and you put it in and you'll go, oh it didn't do anything. <laughs> Um, but you're just trying to get a feel for and a sense for how much you need to take off. You get the idea. It's yeah. just grinding. It's just Yeah. How's it looking? Like it has a gap still. <laughs> so it's time to talk about plank fastenings. There are many different options when it comes to fastening planks to frames in a wooden boat. You can use nails, screws, bolts, rivets. But this boat was originally fastened with copper rivets and that's generally regarded as the best quality fastening for a wooden boat. A rivet is a through fastening, which means it goes all the way through the material, unlike a screw or a nail, and that makes it a lot stronger. And because a rivet isn't cutting into the timber like the threads of a screw would, it's actually also less likely to split out the timber of the frame. Copper rivets are often square in section, but on this boat they were round, probably because that's what they had at the time. But I want to do the same thing, partly for the sake of originality, but mostly because the frames on this boat are made of live oak, which is extremely dense and hard. And a square nail being driven through a round hole uh, requires that the nail cuts into the timber somewhat. And so I think that with these frames, the only way to get a rivet all the way through would be to drill a really oversized hole, which would obviously be a bad thing because it would potentially let water in. Otherwise the copper being very soft is really likely to bend before it makes its way all the way through the frame. Now pre-made copper boat nails or rivets of the size that I need actually don't seem to be available commercially. We could hammer the heads onto the rivets by hand but that's obviously going to be really really time consuming. So I've been doing some research to try and find a fast hydraulic press which seems to be the smartest way to make a lot of these rivet heads fast. But then out of the blue I got a surprising message from someone who got in touch with me actually quite a while ago about helping with the rivets and I kind of had forgotten about it I didn't think it was going anywhere but this guy Jeff says he's actually fabricated a hydraulic press um, and a die that he thinks can do this job um, quickly and efficiently I wasn't involved with the design I didn't really even know it was happening uh, so I don't really know what to expect but he's sent it up and I'm very excited and curious to see it and it should be arriving any minute <laughs>
So here we have just a few lengths of the copper rod that I recently purchased for the plank fastenings. This rod is going to be cut into lengths and then made into rivets. They'll be about five inches long. They'll be driven through the planks and the frames and then pinned over on the inside of the frames. These are 12 foot each and I bought 180 or so of them, uh, which should be more than enough for the 4,000 or so rivets we need and some to spare. So this copper rod is 5 16 in diameter. It's gonna be more than strong enough for this boat and this planking. 180 of these lengths of copper rod uh, cost me uh, well over $4,000, which is not insignificant. And it's costs like this, which are sometimes easy to forget about when you're planning a project like this. I certainly forgot to factor quite a few things into my budget plan when I started and the things I did remember I vastly underestimated. But although it's a little bit painful to spend so much money on something which seems fairly insignificant, it's actually very significant and it's worth spending the money to do this properly. Rivets are the best fastening that a boat like this can have and being copper it's not going to corrode, it's not going to cause any damage or rot in the timber either. So the same fastening method that they used on this boat originally and definitely worth the cost. So this machine arrived today. This was fabricated specifically for this project by Jeff down in California and although I haven't used it yet I'm really impressed already. Now I just got to figure out how it works and hopefully make some rivets with it. Wow, I am so impressed. It's pressing the heads on these rivets so fast and so easily and the whole system is just absolutely ingenious. There's a few really clever things that I especially like about this machine. It's got a cutter in it so you can actually cut the rod to length as you're going through the process. The cutter has an adjustable stop so you can set the length to cut the rivet however long you want to be. And then there's another adjustable stop uh, to actually set the rivet into the die. And this is so that you can vary how big or small the head is gonna be, how much material is poking up out of the top of the die. Once you've placed the two parts of the die over the rivet, you can give it a sharp whack with a mallet, and that locks the inner part of the die, which is kind of like a collet, onto the rod. And then you place the whole die in its designated slot underneath the ram and simply use the lever to bring the ram down and press the head onto the rivet. Then you take the whole die out and you place it into a second designated hole and the purpose of this is actually to pop the outer part of the die away from the inner part and so you make another stroke on the ram just to bring it down and push that outer part down away from the taper on the inner part. And that's it, the rivet just falls straight out very easily and you're ready to cut another one and keep on making them. The whole thing is powered by a small electric motor which powers a hydraulic pump and that pumps the hydraulic fluid from the reservoir around a very simple loop and it continuously flows around that loop until you move the lever one way or the other which forces the hydraulic fluid through the hydraulic ram. The ram is attached to an arm or a bracket at the top here which gears up the movement massively uh, because it's so much longer on the back where the ram is attached than it is on the front. So there's a lot more power in the front here. It's, it's geared down and there's a lot more leverage. I really am astounded at this machine and at Jeff's uh, creativity and skill in designing and fabricating it. So all I can say is a massive thank you to Jeff for such an amazing contribution to this project. All right, so five down, only 3,995 to go.
So now that we've gotten the floors fitted to the insides of the frames, we're gonna start grinding away the surface on the inside so that we can get it nice, smooth, and polished, and looking nice and ready to get bolted down. I feel like I always make more mistakes when I'm being filmed. Like when you were filming me back there last week, I was just like, wow, like whacking my head against stuff. And, I mean, I dropped stuff, but like dropping a lot of stuff. <laughs> So yeah, so this will just come straight out. Yep. Just a little bit wider than you need. This one, as long as it's, as long as it's beyond this corner on this side, beyond the corners on that side. Today, I've been cutting these blocks and installing them to connect these two arms for the hanging knees. It's a little complicated because there's this angle here and all these cuts are compound angles. So I'm taking tracings off of the boat itself. Obviously, these blocks are pretty oversized right now. So after we're done with this step, we're gonna take them down I feel like we're having a standoff or something. You want my hat? Making these has four stages really. The first is laminating the arm. Uh, the next is adding these blocks, which gives you something like that. I'm going to be cutting it to to shape like this one. It's a little bit more complicated than it looks because you've got to think about how we're casting it at this point. Then the next stage is basically to put some fillets in and make some do some roundovers. So it's basically bondo and sanding and a bit of router work.
weird having a camera pointing at me. <laughs> You're gonna have to get used to Find it. Another then. tripod. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, just a couple more days. I left the hardest part for the end though, so. I've got most of the haul, well, the frames fared. Won't call it the haul yet because the planking's not on. Um, we'll, of course, fare again once the planking's all on, but uh, I got most of the frames fared. Um, pretty much everything. Um, now it's just the hard parts, which is the transom and the stem. Um, so right now I'm uh, bringing this batten along all the frames up here and diving it into the rabbit. So I've carved most of the rabbit in the stem. Um, I'm gonna finish cleaning it up. I've slowly fared these in, working my way up to the rabbit. Um, I didn't wanna take too much off one of these and then end up with it uh, a little lower um, than, than the rabbit, so. So after these straight pieces have been glued into place, then the whole pattern comes back out here. I put some screws into all of the joints to make sure that it doesn't fall apart while we're working on it, and then cut these blocks to size. I have to think about how these patterns are gonna be molded into the sand, and how they're gonna come out, where the parting line is, and where I have to put angles on to let it release from the sand. I'm adding bondo to the to these hanging knees to make fillets where the arms connect to these blocks and then sanding it smooth and after we made these patterns some of them got added shims glued onto them that have a taper so they're thicker on one side like here but on the other side like here so that the pieces can be pulled out of the mold at the foundry. That was really clear, right? Your turn. Oh god. <laughs> what are you asking me? Uh, I don't know, I just want to put you on the spot and see you squirm, really. <laughs> Tell us how much you love Bondo. I love Bondo a lot. I love breathing it. I love being covered in it. No, I'm uh, just using a lot of Bondo to fare these curves here. So here we have one of the old hanging knees and you can see that although it kind of fits, it doesn't actually fit that well. Um, partly because the frames are a very slightly different shape, partly because we've changed the beam shelf very slightly, we've notched the deck beam slightly further into it, so we've got this big gap underneath it. And partly because I added just a little extra crown to the deck. So there's various reasons why these 
old hanging knees don't fit and the fact that they don't fit is one of the reasons why uh, I'm not considering putting them back in. The other reason of course being that they are uh, ferrous metal which will damage the wood that it touches. The fact that they don't quite fit also means that we can't really use them as patterns for the new hanging knees, um, but in actual fact we wouldn't really be able to do that anyway because to use them in the foundry they have to be quite light so that you can pull them out of the sand. So here we have one of the new patterns, uh, the pattern for this particular frame, and as you can see it fits up here much more snugly against the frame, the beam shelf and the deck beam. I'm actually not able to push this right into position because it's got an extra large fillet on the inside which will be ground away a bit more later on when it's cast but which we have to have in there to actually help the casting process. And of course this pattern being made of plywood and basswood is much lighter and therefore much easier to use as a pattern. You can kind of see how it, it goes along and then it goes down a little yeah. bit. So if you do want to do that, you'd have to build it up a little bit more and so, it, so it's uh, just a little bit more fair okay. with the rest of it. It's uh, about 10 to, so probably a good time to clean up. These are the first two hanging knee patterns that we finished and we finished sanding them and put some shellac on so they're ready to be taken to the foundry and cast. So where are you going today? Today I'm going to the Port Townsend Foundry to cast these hanging knees. Alright, so we have made all of the hanging knee patterns. A few of them do need a quick coat of shellac, but all the sanding is done, all the fairing, all the bondo work, and all that other fun stuff is all finished. So they're all going to be going to the foundry soon, where they'll be cast. But that's all we've got time for right now, so thanks a lot for watching, and a massive thank you to everyone who's donated or otherwise supported the Tally Ho project. It does make a huge difference, and it means that we're able to take the time to make and edit these videos, so I really, really appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Man, I'm I'm really jealous. <laughs>